going back to the beginning of our conversation, Christopher Gray wrote in this book on Rajneesh that that Osho was leading his followers, his pupils, to the abyss, and that they were creating as many obstacles to to that ultimate revelation as they could. But the, in order to just resist the the uh, this abyss. Oh, you mean the people uh, who formed around Raj? Yeah, his his followers, his pupils, his the people who were surrounding him and getting him his Rolls Royces. And... So the closer they got to a personal annihilation, the more they had to pull in the other direction by distorting the truth that they were getting sucked into. Right, and basically the best form of resistance for them was total worship of, of Rajneesh and uh, being his complete acolyte and, and you know falling completely under his spell. That was their... Makes sense. Ultimate form because of... that's like religion in microcosm, isn't it? If we worship Christ, we don't ever have to actually become Christ. Right. And separation. Yeah. Yeah. But then that can also affect the the guru or the individual himself, and in that he he allows that separation and, and and begins to believe his own myth. What do you see in John Deruda that I don't see? Because uh. <laughs> Can jump in there. What is it about well, him? I, I avoided mentioning John because he's already stirring up stuff at Sweater. Like there's a lot of resistance to John, and that's coming out in resistance to, to Sweater and even me personally. And <clears throat> because of that pull, I mean, the pull of truth, of course, is how I see it. How they see it is, is that I've been tricked and fallen for something that's not real. And so, but I can't speak from their point of view, of course, I can only speak from my own. Um, and what what I see in John is truth, absolute truth, in a, in a more pure form than I've ever seen it before. And it's not just seeing, it's feeling. It's it's actually like a gravitational pull. It pulls like every atom in my body to it. And um, it's not a worshipful thing, although that I am aware of that tendency in me, as it's in everyone to want to worship or look up to an embodiment of something that I'm looking for. What, why do you think that there's so much resistance in Sweta to, to John Deruda? Well, it's exactly what you just said, Doug. Uh, people, when they get too close to the abyss, they will do everything they can to, to resist the pull of it. And so um, it's, it's been very useful to me because it's let me know that what I see in, in John and what I'm responding to actually isn't that easy to see. And so that confirms me in my knowing because I, then I know that I'm not just being tricked by words or it's something that I'm actually not aware of how I'm tuning into it, if you see what I mean, because nobody else, very few other people seem to be able to see it. So I'm like, well, how am I seeing what they're not seeing? How are you seeing him? Do you have you seen his videos, or have you met him in person, or have you read his I've, books? I've met him in person. Yeah, that was what did it. I think that if you have met John or anyone who is transmitting a message of transpersonal truth, or however you want to describe what that is, uh, without actually meeting them in person, you're at a great disadvantage. Uh, it's best not to cast judgment. I I resisted the urge to cast judgment on John just from hearing his audios because the person who introduced me to him was, was trustworthy to me. So I, I said, oh, I'm going to hold my tongue. I'm not going to say anything because I wanted to say quite a lot. I, my eyes were rolling and I really just felt this is not for me. And But then when I actually saw him in person, that, that, that changed almost instantly. Yeah. So, yeah, well, having seen just... Uh a short YouTube video and and read an interview by with him and and uh, heard a couple of audio files. Uh, my reaction to him was, I think, like yours originally. It was, well, although I wanted to go uh, uh, the extra distance too, partly because you're interested in him, you know. And I and I've uh, listened to a lot of your podcasts and I have respect for you. So I was thinking, well, Jason wouldn't just jump off the cliff for any old fraud here. There's got to be something going on that I'm not seeing. But he seems to me to have a shtick, uh, a, a pretty obvious one, uh, as far as seeming enlightened. You know, a lot of silence, a lot of pauses, a lot of staring, 
and not a lot of content. Absolutely, and it's gone more and more like that because his early takes, he talked like a normal person. They were full of content and no pauses, and those are the ones that I've been listening to recently, and, and I, uh, I'm beginning to see now the process of how and why uh, John has become slower and slower and more and more abstract uh, as he goes deeper into what he knows. And so I see very much that it's, it's not a shtick at all. It's something that is actually transforming in John and, and, and why it is, why that is the case. I mean, that would be enough for a whole other podcast, really. Um, but I, I think perhaps for, for those who are skeptical, which is going to be most of the listeners, um, it, it relates to what you said about Rajneesh, and even though it may not be true of Rajneesh, I, I do feel it's true of John, which is that something has naturally formed around him, which is very off-putting, which makes him appear like the classic, untrustworthy guru, Charlton, you know, complete with his two wives and, you know, his his adoring flock and. And, and his long portentous sciences and all the rest of it. And and I don't particularly trust what has formed around John, uh, to be honest. And, th- and that gave me trouble. I thought, well, if he's so enlightened, why would he let something build up around him, which is kind of, not that it's it's not like Rajneesh's thing, but it's still a bit a bit dodgy. But then, I, then it occurred to me that John, uh, if he is what he appears to be or claims to be, then he wouldn't really be... Uh, of this world anyway, so it wouldn't really make any difference to a surrendered being uh, any of this stuff. So it's kind of a living paradox, really. The more, the more you try to question it, the, the more questions you have.